Hey guys, my name is Scobie and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to make 3D text in Blender. This is going to be a nice, quick and easy tutorial. I'm going to be showing you step by step how to do everything. Let's jump right into this. So the first thing I'm going to be doing is opening up a brand new blank document in Blender. I will mention for this video, I'm going to be using version 2.82a, just in case you want to match up exactly with the version I'm using. However, this should also be the same for 2.9, I believe, or very similar. So the first thing I'm doing is using this brand new document. I'm going to be deleting the square on screen by clicking it, making sure it's outlined in orange, clicking the delete key, and then this should delete this file right away. From this point, I'm going to be clicking shift and a, which is going to open up this add field right here. And I'm going to be adding a new text file. Simply select this and then your new text will be added. By using the middle mouse wheel, we can rotate to see the text from a better angle. Or if we press the number seven on our keyboard, we'll be able to see the text from a top down angle. You can use all the numbers on your keyboard to go through different prefix positions. So just find the one that matches best for the text and its orientation. To actually edit this text, what we need to do is hit the tab key with the text selected. And you'll notice we'll be able to move around and actually edit this text. So we can simply click control A to highlight all of the text and type anything we want in here. In this case, I'm just going to be typing SCOBY tech just like this. Click tab again to get out of this edit mode right now. now to actually change and edit the font, what we need to do is make sure we're in the tab mode, in the edit mode, as we see right now. We're going to be clicking and highlighting all of the text. You can do this by clicking Control and A. And then we're going to be coming over to our right panel right here. And we're going to be looking for the A symbol here, which is going to open up the object data properties. From this point, if we come in here, we'll see an option here called font. If we open this up, we'll be able to choose up to four different fonts for our actual blender right here. We can choose a regular, bold, italic, and bold, italic font. To actually change the font, what we need to do is come to the font right here. Change the font, we need to come to any of the fonts right here. Come to the right and look for the folder option. Click this open. So by default, it will come to the fonts folder on your computer. However, if you'd like to locate to any other font file on your computer, you can also do that. In this case, I'm just going to be using the font Molot. Once you have your font selected and your text has changed, we're simply going to be hitting the tab key again, which is going to deselect our font. So at the moment, we actually have our text created. However, if we actually rotate around our text by holding middle mouse and actually scrolling around, we can see that our text right now is perfectly flat. So right now it's essentially just a flat mesh. To actually make this text tick or add some thickness to it, we can actually come back over to our right sidebar, stay in our object properties right here. But this time we're going to be opening up the geometry tab here and we're going to be increasing the extrude option, which is going to add some thickness to our text. So here you can customize and make it exactly as big or as thick as you want it to be. And we also have a couple of other options that we can play around with right here. One of the things we have is the offset, which we can increase or decrease. And this will simply add or remove thickness on our font. In this case, I'm going to be keeping it zero. I think it looks better by default. However, depending on the font and the effect, you can actually experiment with this. And another cool thing we can actually do an effect is using the depth effect right here, which is going to round and actually expand our text, which can create this cool soft effect that I think depending on the texture using can be really, really cool. So from this point, we're going to start adding some textures and colors to our text. The first thing I'm going to suggest we do is come up to the top left and enable this move option right here, which is going to give us some extra move functions for objects on screen. For the text, I'd recommend leaving it right in the center. To make sure it's in the center, what we can do is come over to our right panel again. We're going to be coming to the transform section right here, and we're going to be making sure our location on the x, y, and z coordinates is 0, 0, 0. So you can see as I move my text around, the coordinates will change. By keeping it 0, 0, 0, we make sure it's right in the center of our document. What we're going to be doing now is opening up the materials properties. So we need to make sure we have our text selected. We're going to be coming to this circle icon right here, which is the material properties section. If we click this open, what we can do is add a new property to our text by coming here, simply clicking new. And here we'll get a bunch of different things we can experiment and play around with. For the most part, for this video, I'm going to be leaving everything as default. The only thing I'm going to be changing is the base color, which we can simply click on here and then change the color based on the RGB, HSV or hex coordinates if you want to use any of these. Or you can simply click and actually move around to select and pick a color. In this case, I'm going to be going for a bluish color that we can use in today's video. And we can also play around with the subsurface color to create a cool different effect with the text that we're using. And I would recommend coming in here and experimenting with the different materials, volumes, and a couple of different things here to really make your text cool. However, for today's video, I'm going to be keeping it simple and not experimenting with that for the moment. Now, you may notice that we actually change our text color to blue. However, we don't actually see anything on our text right now. It's still showing perfectly white or this kind of gray tone that's default in Blender. To actually show this, what we need to do is come up to the top right and we're going to be enabling the viewport shading option, which is going to enable us to see the color on the actual text that we enabled before. And it's actually shading everything as well to give it this nice cool effect. So from this point, I'm actually pretty happy with how my text looks. So now we're ready to actually create and export a render of this so we can use the image in different things. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be scrolling around our image and we're going to be 
be looking for the camera. As we didn't delete this at the very beginning, it's still going to be in its default location. However, if you did remove it by accident or you can't find it, simply click Shift and A and we can just add another camera. Now, what we're going to be doing is selecting our camera. We're going to be opening up the properties pane again, and we're going to be setting our location to zero, zero, and zero, which is going to put our camera directly in the center. And I'm also going to be resetting the rotation of this to zero, zero, and zero again. So our camera is going to be pointing perfectly down. What we're going to be doing from this point, depending on the rotation of your text, is just bringing our camera so we can actually bring it above our text, pointing in whatever kind of angle you want. In this case, I'm going to be choosing a straight direct angle. However, you can feel free to experiment this using the rotation here on the right, using the location, and really to experiment and see what the best way is to set up your text. So from this point, I'm just going to be moving my camera a little bit more so it's kind of in the center from where my text is. To actually preview how your camera will look, you can simply hit the number zero on your keyboard, and this is exactly where your camera is right now. You can see I still have this golden outline around my camera, and I can still play with the location, rotation, and dimensions here, so I can really fine tune it to be exactly how I want it. So in my case, what I'm going to be doing is just putting the text perfectly center in my camera here. Now from this point, you can see we actually get a nice 3D depth effect. If you would like to experiment, of course, you can go back and select your text, change the extrude to make it bigger, smaller, or anything else you want from this point. And now that we have this set up, we're ready to add some light sources to actually make sure our text is visible when we create a render. So by default, all scenes will have a default sun here added. Again, we just hold shift and A, and we can simply add a light source. And what I recommend doing is just adding a sun. And what we need to do is just make sure our sun is pointing in the direction of our text. So again, we can move around with the properties that we had set up before. And you can also see there's this small anchor point on our sun that we can actually change and choose where it's actually pointing. Now by default, it'll be pointing directly down. So it'll be directly on top of our text. And that's exactly what we're looking for. Again, if we come over to the right and click on the object properties, we can change the strength and color of this. So feel free to experiment with this a little bit. If it's overexposed or there's too much light, you can simply turn down the strength or you can change the color if you'd like to experiment with different tones and creating different effects here. To create a render of where our image is, we can simply hit the F12 key and you'll see we'll instantly create this cool 3D text render. You can see we've got all the different textures and different effects here. Now, because our light source wasn't perfectly center, you can see the text here on the right has a bit more color to it than the text on the left. So feel free to go in here and add multiple light sources or feel free to move the light sources around to play with how this actually lines up. Now to save this image, what we can do is come up to the top left, click image, click save as, and then you can save this image as a PNG anywhere on your computer. We can choose some extra information here, including the color type, the color depth and the compression on top of the image. To actually change the image settings, the image size and the resolution, come over to the properties panel on the right, click on the output properties, and here we can choose the X and Y resolution along with the percentage and the different aspect ratios if you want to experiment here to set this up exactly what you need and make sure you get a render in the right resolution and the right size for your needs. Anyway guys, it's as easy as that to create 3D text and export image of it in Blender. If you guys enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to drop a like. Subscribe if you're new, check out the other videos on the channel. I'm going to be leaving a link down below to my PayPal if you found these videos helpful and you want to support me. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. Until next time as always, keep it saucy. Peace.